Hi guys, this is Shukesh once again and well today I'm gonna unbox this all new Samsung Galaxy J3 2016 variant and this is the Indian retail unit that is J320F which is also for Europe, Middle East and Africa. It's also available in the US with Virgin Mobile and sports an inferior camera. Now there is a picture of the phone on the box and I'm really liking this gold and black dual tone finish. Along with this gold variant, you are also getting black and white versions as well. Now the price of this phone on the box is 8,990 rupees which is really great but the market price can be below this, I'm not quite sure. This phone is yet to be launched in India. It's made specifically for India with 14 Indian languages support. Now this entry level device supports NFC for Samsung's all new S-Bike feature which is an extremely handy new feature for the bikers. There you get a glimpse of the specs, you are getting USB OTG and 4G support. This is a dual SIM device as well. These are the languages you can use to operate the phone. That's all on the box guys, now let's get started with the unboxing. There you go the all new Samsung Galaxy J3 2016 and the design and build of this phone is typical Samsung not that much upgraded. Well before I talk more about the handset let's quickly check the accessories. As usual you get the paper works for quick start guide, your warranty information etc. Well the headset is a basic one as expected. The earpieces are totally plastic there is nothing special about this. Though the sound clarity is not bad enough for talking and casual music listening. The remote consists of a push button for answering and ending calls and you also get a microphone hole. The 3.5mm jack is not gold plated. If you wish you can always buy a premium one. This is the detachable which is around 3.5 feet long and the charging adapter is again a very basic one. The output rating is 5V 1A so this will take some time to charge your device. It's a very compact adapter and the USB port is at the side which I don't like as this will interfere with other cables on the switchboard. Now most importantly the battery on this phone is of 2600 mAh which is really great for a smartphone with the specs and screen size. You can expect at least 2 full days backup. I will talk more about the battery performance in the full review so keep in touch. Samsung is also including an NFC tag for its S-Bike feature. It's basically a radium sticker which you can stick to your bike or helmet. There are around 19.8 crore bike owners in India so Samsung is targeting those and I really hope that this is a handy feature. Let's first get rid of this mess here, switch on the phone, check this feature and also the display software options etc. Well the design of the Galaxy J3 2016 is nothing new but Samsung did a nice trick. The bezel above the display has been painted black to match the screen and this gives you an impression of a bigger edge to edge display. So despite having a white bezel the phone looks quite premium and the golden color also resembles metal. The frame around the phone is matte finished and nicely goes with the design. Overall for an entry level device the design of the phone is actually quite good. In fact this was the design of Samsung's flagships for a couple of years so nothing to complain here. The back cover is textured and resembles leather but it's totally plastic. Not even rubberized but it's not slippery at all. Now let me give you a quick tour of the exterior ports. First of all you get a 5 inches Super AMOLED HD screen with 1280 by 720 pixels resolution at 294 ppi. Not bad actually for a smartphone at this price point. There you get the typical Samsung home key and capacitive back and app switcher which are not backlit. Above the display you get the 5 megapixel front facing camera with 720p video recording and as usual there is no ambient light sensor on this J series phone so no auto brightness. Next you have the ear speaker grill and there is no LED notification light on this phone as well. Let's move to the rear camera which is an 8 megapixel shooter with only HD video recording. Full HD is not available for this Indian variant of J3. You're also getting an LED flash and the loudspeaker grill. The 3.5mm earphone jack is at the top and the volume rocker is at the right side of the phone. The power button is on the left and these keys are plastic as usual. 
At the bottom, you will find the micro USB 2.0 port for charging as well as data syncing and this is the primary microphone hole. There is no secondary microphone on this phone and the handling of this phone is actually quite great. The power key is easily accessible with your thumb but the volume rocker is hard to reach. Now let's remove the back cover and show you what's under the hood. It's a very easy task for a Samsung device and the micro SIM slots are separate and the SD card slot is just above the SIM1 slot. You can install up to 128GB SD cards and you can of course move your installed applications to your external SD card. Now let's install the battery, switch on the device, check the display quality, the software features and most importantly the all new S-Bike mode. There you go the all new Samsung Galaxy J3 2016 and the first thing you notice is the black border around the screen. It's not even visible when the display is off and a really great design trick from Samsung. When the screen is on it's not looking that bad and the black and gold dual tone is also looking quite stylish. Now the interface is Samsung's latest version of its UI with rounded corner icons and before I open any application let's quickly check the Android version storage and especially RAM. This smartphone is currently running on Android 5.1.1 Lollipop though Android Marshmallow is already out there. You can expect the update anytime soon. Now the RAM on this phone is officially 1.5GB which is quite decent and out of the box before installing any application I am getting. 775 MB free which is actually not bad for a Samsung device. I have seen Samsung phones with 2 GB of RAM having only 500 or 600 MB of free RAM out of the box. Next the storage is 8 GB and the free space at this moment is 4.27 GB which is quite low but you are getting SD card support and also USB OTG that is you can attach your pen drives. As you know you can also connect your mouse, keyboards etc. Now as I mentioned before you are getting the latest version of Samsung UI which is quite snappy and I don't feel any type of lag or shatter. The apps are opening just fine and the app opening time is also quite good. The phone is responding without any issues. Now 5 inches display is just perfect for one handed uses. You can reach all the parts of the keyboard without any problem and swipe input is as good as it can be. Well this is definitely my fault, Samsung swipe input is one of the best in the market. Now the weight of the phone feels just right, it's 138 gram which is not too light, not too heavy. Now let's have a close look at the display here, 294 ppi is actually not bad and you cannot see the pixels even from this distance. But if you put this side by side with a full HD or 2K screen then you will notice the difference. The color rendering or the black levels of Super AMOLED displays are the best in its class and the viewing angles are also ideal for any device. It's really great to see a Super AMOLED screen at this price point and this is one of the main reasons you should get this device. There is an outdoor mode for better visibility under sunlight and there you get the system toggles. Most of the smart features are listed here, the power saving and ultra data saving modes are extremely handy but let's first have a quick look at the spike mode. You can launch this using the toggle or just tap the phone on the NFC tag provided. It's a very well built sticker you can stick to your bike or helmet. Now when this mode is on all of your incoming calls will be filtered and you will only be notified about the urgent calls while you are driving and you will also not be able to use your phone when you are speeding over 10 km per hour. So you need to slow down first and take the call. In addition to that earphones won't work when this mode is on so you cannot listen to music or take a call using the earphone. As I mentioned before you can alternatively launch a spike mode using the NFC sticker. Now the S-Bike mode has been enabled and you can long press this button to disable it anytime. Now you can check your missed notifications here and only missed calls are shown sorted by urgency. There is a smart replay option as well which will send automatic text messages containing your estimated journey time to selected contacts when they call so after enabling smart reply you have to enter your destination and select the contacts you want to share your journey details with. You can also check your travel information and earn some badges. Then share the badges on social media and also participate in contests to earn rewards from Samsung. 
your home address can be pinned and the same can be done for your work address. The auto reply message can be in any of the supported 14 languages. This mode can also reject all the calls while you are roaming. Activation via NFC sticker can be disabled as well. Now there is another very interesting feature I am gonna talk about. Suppose you are riding your bike and the S bike mode is on. Then all of your incoming calls will be answered automatically and callers will be asked to press 1 if their call is urgent. You will then only be notified about your urgent calls. But to take the call you have to lower your bike speed below 10 km per hour. So indeed a great and very handy feature. This will prevent the bikers from accessing the phone while they are riding so that their eyes are on the road and hands off the phone. So I do recommend you guys to utilize this nice feature when you are riding your bike. Now in addition to this you are also getting ultra power saving mode, do not disturb, torch etc. So this is the benefit of getting a Samsung device, so many smart features. Samsung Smart Manager is another very handy tool. You can scan the whole device for adware, malware, etc. and also monitor your RAM and storage uses. Just end all the running applications to clear the RAM and as you know some of these applications will restart automatically. Let's see what's the free RAM I'm getting. Well 411 MB has been freed. The free RAM is good 784 MB. Cache and unnecessary storage can be cleared as well. You can also swipe left to enable ultra data saving mode which can save up to 40% of your mobile data. Well just like the previous year's Galaxy J series devices, you are getting some preloaded bloatware apps which are basically some trial versions of games you cannot uninstall. If you wish you can disable that is hide but still these are eating up the space on the phone. Samsung actually gets paid for this ad so this helps the company to keep the price of the phone low. You can also take a backup of the phone into a USB storage device. Pressing and holding a notification will open the app notification preferences. If you wish you can disable notification for supported applications. You can also set as priority and hide on the lock screen. Samsung phones are so feature rich it will take me hours to show you all the features. On the upcoming full review I will try to cover as many tips and tricks as I can. So make sure you are subscribed and also check the description of this video for the link. Now let me show you the camera on this phone. As you know the main camera is an 8 megapixel shooter and the front is a good 5 megapixel shooter. There you get the box of Lenovo K5 Plus which is a direct competitor to this phone. I will drop the link to this phone's review in the description below. The viewfinder is looking great. The autofocus is also working just fine. Seems like a decent camera, though I can see some noise at the background. I will try this camera, capture some images and share with you the photos on my Facebook page facebook.com slash gadgets portal. Now let's check the captured images. Well the image is looking sharp and in focus, though there is noticeable noise. As this is a Samsung camera you are getting numerous modes and also some effects. I will give you a demo of this in the full review. Now let's check the settings. The camera is in 16 to 9 that's why you are getting 6 megapixel. The video capability is unfortunately only HD. You are also getting quick launch that is the camera can be opened just by double tapping the home button whenever you want even when the screen is off and the phone is locked. Next, let's play video on YouTube. Guys, I've started a new video series called you Genius or Junk where I'll talk about some very cheap gadgets. So check that out. That is just now the speaker on this phone seems loud enough for indoor. Basic Apple watch. I'm saying that because this watch actually resembles the Apple watch in every possible way. 
So what is this actually? Is this just a piece Watching of Watching videos on this vibrant Super AMOLED screen is always pleasant. Well guys, we are almost at the end of this unboxing and hands on on this all new Samsung Galaxy J3 2016. Overall, this budget device from Samsung is feature packed and you are also getting theme support which can change the overall look and feel of the phone with custom icons, redesigned dial pad, keyboard and notification center. Just wait for the full review, I'll show you all the software tweaks. So it will be great if you subscribe and keep in touch. If you are also buying this device then please use the links in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching guys, this is Shukesh Banik and see you in the next review.